The Battle of Ashburn, Easter 1916 The Easter Rising began on Monday the 24th of April 1916. A section of the Irish Volunteers, led by Porrick Pearce and supported by James Connolly's Irish Citizen Army, seized strategic locations in central Dublin and proclaimed an Irish Republic. The rebels held out until Sunday the 30th of April against the forces sent to suppress the Rising. By then, much of the centre of Dublin city had been destroyed, and fatalities, the majority of them civilian, numbered about 485. Given that in excess of 200,000 Irishmen enlisted with the British Army in World War I, it is perhaps not surprising that the initial public response to the Rising was negative. Following the execution of the leaders in early May, Coupled with moves to extend conscription to Ireland, opinion throughout most of the country began to shift towards seceding from the British Empire. Other volunteer activity took place in Galway, Wexford, Cork, Tyrone and Louth. Outside Dublin, the main action took place here at Ashburn County Meath, where the 5th Battalion of the Dublin Brigade, known as the Fingal Battalion, engaged in battle with a contingent of the Royal Irish Constabulary on Friday the 28th of April 1916. This became known as the Battle of Ashburn. In 1916 the roads around Ashburn were narrower and were bordered by a mix of high hedges, tall banks and drainage ditches. These features provided cover for the volunteers and later for some of the RIC and were used in the battle to hide a decisive movement by the volunteers. The terrain helps explain the protracted nature of the battle, considering the close range at which it was fought. It may also help explain the low number of casualties of the volunteers as compared to the RIC. Around 10am on Friday the 28th of April, three sections of volunteers, each comprising roughly of 12 men, led by Thomas Ash and Richard Mulcahy as second in command, left their camp at Boronstown, with the objective of destroying the rail line at Batterstown. Their route would take them close to the RIC barracks at Ashburn, and it was planned to put the barracks out of action before proceeding towards Batterstown. At Rath Crossroads, three RIC men barricading the road were disarmed, and two were taken prisoner. Later, when Ash called on the RIC inside the barracks to surrender, they responded with a volley of shots. The volunteers returned fire from behind an embankment in front of the barracks. The exchange of fire continued intermittently for about a half an hour. A homemade canister grenade was thrown at the barracks and exploded in the front garden. This broke the morale of the defenders who thrust a white handkerchief through a window, offering to surrender. At this point, shots were heard from the crossroads, signalling the arrival of police reinforcements. The focus of the action then shifted to the crossroads. The RIC men in the barracks took no further part in the action which followed. Shortly after midday, a contingent of 59 RIC officers, drawn from stations all over Meath, led by County Inspector Alexander Baby Gray, arrived in a convoy of 15 cars. Shots from the volunteers stationed at the crossroads halted the convoy, killing and wounding some of the occupants of the leading car, including Gray, who died 12 days later. Leaving two men to cover the barracks, the volunteers opposite the barracks made their way up the western side of the road to the crossroads, from where they fired into the convoy. Many of the policemen were pinned down in the open and under the cars, though some made it to the relative safety of the ditches on the side of the road north of the crossroads. Ash and Mulcahy, in a hasty conference on the Garristown Road, decided to position a group of men to the north of the convoy to cut off an RIC retreat, while issuing orders to bring up the fourth section of volunteers from their camp at Boronstown. Ash guided a group of six volunteers from a position two fields down the Garristown Road in an outflanking move northwards and positioned them behind the convoy. 
Ash then returned to the main group at the crossroads, leaving Joe Lawless in charge north of the convoy. Lawless's group came under fire and two volunteers were wounded. Retreating towards the Garristown Road, they engaged in a friendly fire incident with the reinforcements being brought up from the camp by Mulcahy. On reaching the main group at the Garristown Road, Joe Lawless, believing their position to be overrun, informed Ash of this fact. Acting on this information, Ash and Hayes ordered a retreat from the crossroads. Now, Mulcahy arrived in pursuit of Lawless, and having explained the confusion that led to the friendly fire incident, he convinced Thomas Ash to halt the retreat. The second friendly fire incident occurred during the short-lived retreat as the volunteers attempted to withdraw from the crossroads when they were fired upon by an outlying volunteer. Sometime later, a group of 11 RIC men near the crossroads surrendered. The volunteers then replenished their stocks with captured weapons and ammunition. The fourth section, led by Frank Lawless, had by this time moved to the north of the convoy. There, District Inspector Harry Smith, in an attempt to rally his men to break out from their position, stood up upon a ditch. He saw the volunteers approaching and shot and mortally wounded volunteer John Crenigan. Smith was immediately shot by Frank Lawless and died shortly afterwards. The fall of Inspector Smith broke the resolve of the RAC and they began to surrender all down the road as the volunteers charged them from both ends. The battle had lasted for upwards of five hours. A total of 13 men died on the day and in the days and weeks that followed from the injuries they received at Ashburn. With the exception of Inspector Harry Smith and chauffeur Albert Keep, all the participants in the battle were Irish. Mulcahy recounted later how as the volunteers medical officer Dr Richard Hayes was treating the wounded after the surrender, an RIC man stretched out his hand saying, we are all Irish men. You know me, sir. I'm Glennon the Boxer. On the morning after the battle, the volunteers moved to new quarters at Newbarn near Kilsallahan. On Sunday, April the 30th, an order to surrender was received from Dublin. The volunteers buried some of their by now very extensive armoury and destroyed the rest. Most surrendered and some went on the run. Thomas Ashe died in 1917 while on hunger strike. Richard Mulcahy became Chief of Staff of the Irish Army in 1921 and Minister for Defence in the new government.